and welcome to part two of our discussion on the Dynon AP74 Autopilot and its related components. I'm Ashley Pelk and this video is brought to you by the Blue Skies Flying Services. Unlike round dial instruments that have gyros with moving parts which provide attitude references, this glass cockpit design relies on the ADAHARS, or Air Data Attitude and Heading Reference System. The primary flight instruments on your PFD display are generated using a group of calibrated sensors. All of them are solid state, that is, there are no moving parts. These sensors include accelerometers, which measure forces in all three directions, rotational rate sensors, which sense rotation about all three axes, pressure transducers for measuring air data, and magnetometers on all three axes for measuring magnetic heading. These sensors form the core of Dynon's Air Data Attitude and Heading Reference System, or ADAHARS, for short. The data from the pitot and static sources are sent to the ADAHARS where this data, along with attitude and acceleration data, are digitized and sent to the EFIS, DSAB, and the autopilot. The ADAHARS does the work of the gyros, pitot static systems, directional gyro, and turn coordinator, but without any moving There are parts. two additional options that are included with this limited model Piper Sport that work in conjunction with the AP-74 Autopilot. The first item is the AP-74 Autopilot interface module, as seen here. The four switches located on the right-hand side of this unit are titled Heading, Track, Nav, and Alt. Any of these switches, when pressed, will illuminate two lights within the switch indicating that mode is now pre-armed and will engage once the AP or autopilot switch located on the left side of the module has been pressed thus engaging the autopilot. Notice the lights illuminated in the heading and the alt switches in this slide. This indicates that these modes are pre-armed. The operation of these four switches will be covered later in this course. The value knob on the autopilot module, if pressed once, will display a window on the EFIS and the EMS screens and will display the current barometric setting. Turning the value knob will change the barometric pressure reading. The window will disappear after a few seconds and the newly selected barometric pressure can then be read just below the altitude tape on any PFD display. Pressing the value knob a second time will display a window on the EFIS and the EMS and will show you a heading value. Turning the value knob will change the heading value, thus allowing you to reset the heading bug on the heading indicator tape. Pressing the value knob a third time will display a window on the EFIS and the EMS and will show you an altitude value. Turning the value knob will change the altitude value thus allowing you to preset an altitude that you would like the autopilot to climb or descend to once the autopilot has been engaged. The last option that was included is the HS34 or HSI expansion module. The course knob is used as an OBS or Omni bearing selector. When you are in the VOR mode of navigation, the course knob is used to dial in the desired course you wish to navigate along. You could also push the course knob and it will sync to your current heading. The heading knob is used to select a desired heading bug. This bug is yellow in color and found along the horizontal compass tape on any PFD display. You can also press this knob and the heading bug will automatically sync to your current heading. If you have pre-armed the heading mode on the AP74 Autopilot interface module, you may wish to sync the heading bug prior to engaging the autopilot as the autopilot, once engaged, will immediately turn to whatever heading is selected by the heading bug. The value knob serves the same purpose as the value knob on the AP74 module, except that it does not include a heading mode, as there is a dedicated heading knob located on the HS34. The nav source button selects the navigation function to be displayed on the HSI, and the autopilot will only navigate to the GPS or nav, VOR, localizer or back course function that has been selected on the HSI. When the GPS mode has been selected, a magenta light just above the letters GPS on the HS34 module will be illuminated. 
When the nav mode has been selected, a dim green light will illuminate above the letter's nav. There is a third selection on our system that is not linked to any navigation mode, and thus there are no lights illuminated when the nav source is in this position. Additionally, no data will be displayed on the HSI while in this mode. The Bearing Source button selects which bearing pointers will be displayed on the HSI. Pressing the Bearing Source button highlights a green or magenta rectangle to the left of the first bearing pointer symbol, which looks like a yellow diamond. After selecting which bearing pointer you desire to display, turning the Value knob allows you to link a navigation source from all options, i.e. GPS, VOR, or Standby, to the selected bearing pointer. Selecting GPS as a source will point the bearing pointer to the active waypoint. Selecting NAV will point the bearing pointer towards the VOR in the active position of the SL30 NAVCOM. Selecting Standby will point the bearing pointer towards the VOR in the standby position of the SL30 NAVCOM. The number one bearing pointer will be displayed as a yellow double line pointer with a diamond symbol on the end of the pointer that points towards the selected navigation source on the HSI. Pressing the bearing source button a second time highlights either a green or magenta rectangle to the left of the second bearing pointer symbol, which looks like an orange circle. The second bearing pointer is displayed on the HSI as a single needle, is orange in color, and has a circle symbol on the end of the pointer that points to the nav in the standby position. Again, turning the value knob allows you to link a bearing source to the second bearing pointer. If you wait more than five seconds without adjusting anything or pressing any buttons, the selection self clears. Now I'm going to show you how to link the bearing pointer to the VOR that is listed in the active nav radio. I'll press the bearing source button to highlight a rectangle opposite the bearing pointer symbol. Then I'll turn the value knob to nav. Now I have linked the yellow bearing pointer to the active nav frequency. The Garmin SL30 NAVCOM allows you to monitor the VOR that is in the standby position. If you desire to link one of the bearing pointers to the VOR that is tuned to the standby position, please refer to the SL30 Pilot's Guide, which states, The NAV radio provides a monitor function for VORs as the standby channel, similar to the COM radio. The monitor function is activated or deactivated by pressing the NAV button while in the NAV function. The FROM radial for the standby channel is shown in parentheses when the VOR monitor mode is activated. A small M will replace the S in front of the standby frequency. You can use the monitor function of the standby channel as if it were a second nav receiver. If you would like to see more of our review of the Dynon AP74 autopilot system, please view part 3 of this series.